Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about something which is very, very tricky, very, very subtle, and but it it's it it's sort of far-reaching, and that is the idea of how a mixed partial tells you how you should match two different groups which need two observing. By match, I mean something like you have, let's say, you have four people here and you have four people here, and you need to decide who you want to pair, put them in pairs. Each person can go in exactly one pair with the other one, so. A blue dot goes with a black dot, and you have to decide which how to pair them. Which blue dot goes with which black dot? So I'm going to take first. I'm going to take an example of teachers and students. Okay, that's teacher and that student. And let's say you have four teachers. I don't. I mean, four isn't important. I just made four dots, so I'm going to just keep talking about four. But you just have imagine n when I say four. Okay, so I have four teachers and four students. Okay, and now I have to I have to decide how do I pair the teachers and students. And and let's say there's there are there is there, let's say the, so the, there's an output function for each teacher and each student. Make a red output. So for every teacher and every student, there is an output function. I'll call this G. So the, okay, let's say there's a teacher quality, call it T, and the teacher quality T, and there's a student quality S, and G of T comma S tells you like how the is the output for the student performance. And let's say Let's say I assume that G is increasing in both T and S. That means if I keep student quality constant and I increase teacher quality, then student performance goes up. Okay, so what what does that mean? G G T. So I could have much more than four. I'm just I'm just assuming that it's a continuous function variable. So there's actually only four different values of T and four different values of S. I'm just making the picture. Uh, using a continuous version and gs of t what does this gs being greater than zero mean what does it mean means marginal product well we're not producing so we're just, uh, yeah but yeah the same idea <laughs> marginal right? performance of the, the students the student if you if you keep the teacher constant and you move from a from a from a you increase student quality holding teacher quality constant performance goes up okay so now the question is how do you pair teachers with students? So let's assume the teachers, you, you have, let's say they are in arranged in decreasing order of quality. So the, the one on the top is the best teacher. And, and what, so I'm assuming that there's no interaction effect on quality directly. So I'm, I'm assuming that, that for every student, this, the, this, this teacher, the one here, which is the blue one, but the, the best teacher is really the best teacher for every student. Okay? I mean, this, so this is a very simple example so far, right? So I'm assuming that that if if any individual student had the choice, she would pick the best teacher, right? And if any individual teacher had the choice, she would pick the best student. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so and so I'm assuming that it's I'm not assuming that each student has their own sort sort of preferred teacher or anything. Each student prefers the best teacher. Each teacher prefers the best student if they can get them. Now the question is, how will the teachers and students pair up? Will the best teachers go with the best students, or will the best teachers go with the worst students? What, what, how do you think that that can be decided? Let's say you are a, you are a, you are the dictator, and you want to maximize the the sum of the total of all the student performances. What would you? How would you decide if you are a dictator, utilitarian dictator? You want to maximize the total of the student performances. What would you do? I don't know. <laughs> like, do you think it's it's good idea to to pair the best teachers with the best students? Mm. Don't the best students deserve the best teachers? May not be the case. Why not? Mm. What does it really depend on? Let let let's just let's forget four and let's just do let's say you have just the top two and the let's let's say the bottom two teachers and students are are uh, out of our picture. Let's say you just are dealing with two teachers and two students. Oh, okay. 
So if we pair the best teacher with the best student and pair the second best with the second best,、mm. and then we want us we want to know if we switch the decreased student performance of the first pair, can it be compensated by the increase of the second student? Yeah. yeah. So so basically, you're trying to figure out if you. If if you switch the student, if you if you do a switching, so let's say you you originally have have a pairing like this, so straight lines, and and then the other pairing is this cross pairing. How do those pairings compare? So what you think of? Let's say you think of this student. Okay, this student is thinking of getting an upgrade from this teacher to this teacher, whereas this student is getting a downgrade from this teacher to this teacher. So for this student, what's the increase? It's g sub p, right? For this student, the decrease is is g sub t with a minus sign or whatever,、mm -hmm. right? Now you now now we have to figure out if the student quality increases, ja, does g sub t increase or decrease? Right, we're trying to figure out if the student becomes better, does the does the effect of teachers, does the marginal effect of teachers increase or decrease if you change the student? So, if you go from a from a lower quality student to a higher quality student, does the does the marginal effect of teacher quality increase or decrease? So, how would you capture that?、Um, G sub T S. Okay. What does that capture? It captures the G sub T is just the effect of change in teacher quality. On the performance, keeping student quality constant. G sub T S is actually trying to figure out how that that change changes when you change student quality. Okay. Now you can also measure it in the other form, that is G sub S T. And the point is, these numbers are equal because of that Clairaut's theorem. But intuitively, you can see it's trying to measure the same. It's trying to measure how change or how how change in one thing affects the marginal value of the other. Now, what can you say if this is greater than zero? In cases, if it's greater than zero, then what? Then that means that that the better students or the higher quality students see more of an increase, benefit more from an upgrade in teacher quality, right? So, if it's greater than zero, then what? Then what kind of a of a of a matching will you get? What do you like for optimal for maximizing total student performance? Best teacher with the best student. Yeah, so you'd have a what we might call a assortative or assortative matching, which means you really sort the best with the best, or a positive matching. What would equal to zero mean? It also mean it mean that the teacher role and the student role are adequately separable. It means that 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 sort of it's like the teacher does some part and the student does that. They don't really care. Like the students and the teachers don't really care who's with whom, right? So it doesn't matter. Any anything goes. All things are equal. Right. All, all parents. It doesn't matter how they're matched. Yeah, as far as far as the total is concerned, because it's just like if it's if it's zero, then that means it's actually additively separable. If it's additively separable, then the total will just be the total of the teachers plus the total of the students. It doesn't matter how they're paired. Right? They're not interacting. And、uh, less than zero, what would that mean? How would they? So we should match the first best teacher with the second best student. Well, if there's just two of them,、mm -hmm. but now if you have all four of them, you do the first with the lowest, right? So you do like negative selection. You you'd actually, uh, you negative matching. You you'd actually match the the best with the worst. The、uh, I initially I just did two just to make it clear what's happening, but you can now do it with everything. Now, so the situation could be a little more complex because it may be the case that the sign of this expression is not always positive. Some places it's zero, some it's negative, some places. In which case, the optimal matching may not be completely of these types. It could be negative in some parts. It could be positive in some parts.、Mm -hmm. But if you have, if you, if this thing is greater than zero on all pairs or throughout, then it will be completely positive. And if it's less than zero, then it will be completely negative. Which means, intuitively, what does that mean? So, so you imagine like you have these like really 
great teachers and you have these really great students and you have these poor poorly performing students okay uh i mean no value judgment about them that person just that they're not doing so well and so the if you if the the assortative or positive type of situation occur if the best students can really benefit a lot from guidance from the best teachers right the best students really uh don't don't Whereas for the worst students, it doesn't matter so much whether they have good teachers or bad teachers, because maybe maybe they won't do that well anyway, or maybe they whatever. Right? That's when you have a positive selection. If if the best ones really are more quality sensitive, on that you get negative selection. If you if you have if you are in a model where the best students will learn the stuff anyway, right? Ah, uh, but it's the worst students or the lowest quality students who really can benefit from an upgrade in teacher quality. Right, so you could you could imagine different types of situations where different types of results are. The other thing I want to say, this is really important, is that student performance is it really does matter how you measure this. So it it matters cardinally. So. Okay, what I mean is that that if I have if I have two measures of student performance and they are ordinarily the same, they are equivalent up to a monotone transformation, but one of them is cardinally different, which means that maybe one of them is the square of the other, right? Then, then then the signs of the mixed partials could actually change. You get that? No. Oh, good. So 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 okay. So what I'm saying is let's let's imagine that you have you have these. Uh, you 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 let let's say the student performance is being measured by a by a test, okay, and and if let, let's say that test is a really is a really easy test and it's 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 censored from above, so you cannot score like you if even if you're really brilliant you cannot score more than hundred and and if you're reasonably good you'll anyway score up to a hundred or something like that. So the the test doesn't really differentiate much between between being really good and being brilliant. Then then in that test. It might make more sense to have to do a negative selection if you think that the sort of the worst students could actually get get to be reasonably good, but the best students, even with bad teachers, they won't do so well. I mean, they won't do so much better, right? So if if your if your test is if the if the if the scoring on your test is such that is such that the difference between very good and brilliant is let's say you have like these three points, and let's say this is bad this is okay and this is good if your test really like the 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 numerical difference between okay and good is much smaller than the numerical difference between okay and bad then it might make more sense to do to do a negative selection or whatever but i mean uh on the other hand if your test the, the way it's scored is that the same set of people there's a lot of there's a lot more on the plus side you can score right so if you have these hard questions which really help a lot good student good teacher training really helps on those then 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 maybe us then maybe positive selection would be better so so these two things as far as the ordering of the of the actual people is considered the same but because the numerical difference in this test this test is more sensitive to figuring out differences in the top tier Therefore, with with this type of testing, you might see more of positive selection in the positive matching. Whereas with the test that that doesn't really differentiate much at the high end, you might see more of a negative selection or negative matching because uh, because because it pays to for good teachers to try to get the bad or mediocre students up to the okay level, but it doesn't pay so much to get go from okay to good. Okay, I think it has important institutional implications. So. But the point I'm trying to make is the sign of the of the mixed partial really depends on the on the way you do your 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 cardinal. So you've probably seen this notion of monotone uh, transformation. Right? There are some things you have utility functions and you can do monotone transformations on them. You get new utility functions and most of the properties remain the same. But there are some things which really depend on how you do your monotone. They can get affected by doing monotone transformations. And mixed partials is one of them. Now the sign of the first partials actually doesn't depend. On monotone transformation, it does not change when you do a monotone transformation. Right? The fact that teacher that that performance increase in teacher quality doesn't change if you change the way you measure teacher quality, mm -hmm. as long as it's monotone transformation. But the sign of the second partial 
that could change when you when you when you change the way you are the the way you are scaling things okay and that's the the, the, the way the how sensitive it is at different portions of the spectrum could affect that so this was mixed partition and matching between teachers and students now you could uh, do something similar if you want between uh, in the marriage market or the mating market or companionship or whatever and so you could have instead of teachers you could have females and instead of students you could have males or vice versa and and then the idea would be so instead, of, instead of student performance you would have a domestic production function like whatever people produce when they get married kids and entertainment and other stuff and the derivative with respect to instead of teachers you differentiate with respect to females and males and even there if you assume that that there's like a single ranking for females and males so there's a female quality and a male quality you still have this interesting situation where if you had mixed partials they could go either way right so you could have mixed partials and if the mixed partials are positive then that means that the best females will assort with the best males if the mixed partials are negative then that means that the best females will assort with the worst males now i want to go say one more thing which is that if you remember what from early from the discussion of the of the factories and factory owners when mixed partials are positive what do you what what word do you use for that to think of inputs to your production process positive mixed partial means uh, complementary complementary right so assortative happens when they are complementary and the negative or the reverse assortative happens when they are substitutes Substitute. okay that makes sense if the teacher substitute for if the teachers if the teacher quality substitutes a student quality makes sense to get the good teacher with the bad student and similarly if the male quality substitutes a female quality then you know like like if you are if you are trying to figure out whether how good like if you are trying to say culinary cooking skill then maybe like if either of them is good at cooking that's good enough and in that case they substitute for each other so in that case the males who cook well may marry the females who cook or sorry the females who cook well may marry the males who don't cook well and the females who don't cook well may marry the males who cook well well there may be some things which they jointly enjoy like uh, like if if cooking is something that they that they jointly enjoy then it may be the other way around then the then the males and females who cook well may may want to marry because they like cooking together or whatever so it it, it all depends on whether you think of these the this the the quality as complementary or as substitutes for each other